Yes, sir. My name is Wolfgang Halbig. I'm from Lake County, Florida, a town called Sorrento, Florida. I am a national school safety consultant. For the last 25 years, I've traveled the country. And you look at me like I'm here today to create a problem. That's the last thing I want to do. You have an incident that happened on December 14, 2012. As tragic as it was, it got national attention, worldwide attention. I was one of the first people in my community to donate money to your cause. Let me tell you something. When tragedy strikes in any community, the first thing you can do is give money because it takes money to heal. It took me about a week and a half to get over the shock as to what I saw at Sandy Hook. Board members, I contacted the superintendent two days after the incident. I offered and extended any help they might need because I train people on incident command. This is what I do for a living. And I was offering my help. I send an email. I have sent emails to each one of you board members. I've contacted the superintendent's office, the director of facility. Ladies and gentlemen, not one phone call back from your district. Not one FOI request that you responded to. You had a man sitting here from the Freedom of Information Act giving you a lesson on what is, what is documents that should be released under public records. And yes, to this day, you have refused to answer phone calls and you have refused to answer my FOI request. And you're a public education. Do you not teach character education? You use the word honesty in your presentation. Where's the honesty in this room? No matter how tragic that event might have been, people in America deserve the truth. Because guess what? There isn't a school district in America that wants another Sandy Hook happening in their district, not private or parochial. And ladies and gentlemen, the questions I ask are not offensive to any parent who lost a child that day. They're not offensive to the Connecticut State Police. They're not offensive to anyone. They're such simple questions. Why no trauma helicopters? Why would you not let paramedics, board members, these are your children, and you wouldn't let paramedics and EMTs into the building? You got 27 children declared dead within eight minutes? Who does this? Who is so great at that job? And I'll just leave you with that. Ladies and gentlemen, you are the board member. You are the leaders of this community. You are the superintendent. Respond. You have a great secretary. But guess what? I sense in her voice she's afraid. She's afraid to even call me back. That should not be happening in any school district. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here tonight not to disrupt your meeting. We want answers. We want truth. Part of character education that we teach our children, you are modeling responsibility, caring, and I'll quit. Thank you for letting her know. But ladies and gentlemen, character education is about caring, responsibility, honesty. And guess what? You're teaching your children. Why don't you do it the same way and respond? And I thank you for your time. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, there's a gentleman behind you that oh, was I'm recognized. Sorry. My name is uh, Jim Fetzer. I'm a former Marine Corps officer, a retired professor, and a journalist for veterans today. During my research into Sandy Hook, I've discovered that it was a 10-10 school, an outstanding school that scored a 10 on a, with 10 measures, K through 4, with 626 students, which rather astonished me because if you subtract 20 for the children who were killed, that leaves 606. Where were they on the day of this event? If you assume buses will take 50 students, that would have been at least 12 buses. But we don't find any, any footage, any reports of this massive number of students being evacuated from Sandy Hook or a large number of buses. Some of the reasons some of us have been skeptical about this event include, for example, that the final report from the state police does not include the names, the ages, or the sex of any of the victims, that the clerk for Newtown entered into secret arrangements with the state legislature to avoid releasing any death certificates, that the attorney general of the state fought against the release of the 911 calls, that the uh, 
those who were involved in taking down the school were subjected to lifetime gag orders, all of which are suggestive I that there's something here to hide. Moreover, in order to obtain that outstanding score of 1010, um, the, 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 the school had to be um, so in immaculate so condition, in both in internally and, and externally. Really After the event, however, the B published a report about the fact that the school could not be refurbished because it was loaded with asbestos and other biohazards, which raises the question of when were parents notified that their children were actually going to school in a toxic waste dump. No children should have been at Sandy Hook. This event has terrified parents and children across this country, and I and many others are simply here in pursuit of the truth. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? I'd like to address the board. Thank you. My name is Melbourne Sand. I'm from Rome, New York. <clears throat> I've been a resident there for 17 years. Formerly, I served in the military under the infantry and then uh, flying helicopters in Europe during the Gulf War. I was just relaxing one day, and uh, then I, under I understand Sandy Hook happened. Didn't pay much attention to it. It was a sad event. But within 45 days, our state has passed the strictest gun control in the nation. Connecticut was poised to pass the same legislation as was the federal agenda. Now, I understand that there is some psych ops operations, and that's what I think this is, this is falls under. It's unfortunate, but it's happened. We all seem like honest people here, and we're going to see who's honest and who isn't. I'm not saying anyone's not, and I hope it all works out, and I apologize in advance if in fact there were, uh, there were children and, and people that were killed. We don't have any proof saying that they were, so that's all we're looking for. That's all we want. We want Freedom of Information Acts uh, honored. We want information to come out. We want the truth, and that's why we're here. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Dan Bedanti of Infowars.com, and um, I'm a Rhode Island resident. I'm not from Connecticut, but however, this tragedy that took place with Sandy Hook affected the whole country. And what's worse and more of a tragedy than this is the uh, constant onslaught on our civil liberties. Here in Connecticut, we have over 100,000 honest gun owners who are law-abiding citizens. They had to suffer for this crisis to turn into uh, um, assault weapons and so on. In Rhode Island, they're trying to push through the same draconian laws that are unconstitutional. The question is here, why should us Americans have to give up our civil liberties, our way of life, and what made this country? It was a gun of a barrel that won a revolution. And we got uh, people in top levels of government trying hell-bent the United Nations doctrines openly stating that they wanted to summon the American citizens. Now, I'm, you know, no, I'm a gun owner. The last thing on our heads, we never want to use a gun on another human being. But the thing is, it's better for the, us to have a gun and not want to wish we had one when we needed one. But the point is, the Founding Fathers established the Second Amendment not for duck hunting. It was to protect ourselves from a tyrannical government. That's right in the Constitution, the Second Amendment. However, um, these tragedies that took place, it's unfortunate, and my heart's going out to all the souls of the poor children and the parents. But however, ask yourself this question. All you people calling for gun control. If there were armed security guards or armed teachers at that school, those children would be alive and well today. But instead, instead of going after that issue, what they do is they turn on the honest gun American citizen and try to take their weapons away. I mean, history proves that uh, Fidel Castro did it, Hitler did it, Stalin did it. You take the guns away, you know, uh, have registration leads to confiscation, and we have a dictatorship all night. And now all of us, regardless if you're a Republican or Democrat, it's not about political issues, which the mainstream media and our government like to make it about political issues. No, it's about the Constitution. It's about our way of life and freedom. And, uh, and a lot of people I know is a soft subject about guns right now, but the thing is, without guns, none of us would be here today as a free American citizen. So I'm not saying we've got to go shoot up everything. No. 
We need guns to protect ourselves. And what, this is why Adam Lanza chose to drive by six schools and choose Sandy Hook because it was one of the gun-free zones. Now you take uh, statistics. FBI.gov shows that states with the highest gun control, you have Illinois, who pride themselves on the best gun control in the country, however, have the worst and highest crime rates with guns in the country. And again, we're not saying it's going to be like the Wild West, but the thing is, all you, I'm sure you're homeowners and you have families and all that, and uh, you think 911 is going to help when the average response time is about 11 to 14 minutes? And uh, would you rather have a weapon in your home to protect yourself and the family from rape or any kind of a crime that was taking place? And, you know, I mean, the thing is, the, the, the government uses the, you know, because they want to take the guns away, so they use the, they exploit the poor children in Sandy Hook here and to say, this is why we need to take guns away. Thank you. You know what I mean? Thank you. Your Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for taking the time to listen to each of us. Uh, my name is Dave Williams. I'm here as a private citizen. I'm from Carson City, Nevada. I'm concerned about this incident and the many questions about it and the repercussions in terms of draconian reg uh, regulation and restriction on Second Amendment rights. There are many questions. Uh, Mr. Halvig has listed 16 questions. Um, I think. If there's nothing to hide, the best thing to do is to disclose information. Then there's no suspicion that something is being hidden. And I don't understand why he's gone 11 months with legitimate requests and has received nothing. Uh, I'd like to point out we're in the Internet age, and in this age people can speak and write anonymously, and that there are some great outlets that if people want to go on background without giving their names. They can go to the American Free Press or InfoWars or Veterans Today. You saw Jim Fetzer here today, who's with Veterans Today. Uh, these are people who know how to respect confidentiality, and I hope you'll take advantage of that if you have information that would help with our investigation. Thank you very much for your time. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin LaFraud. Um, just a regular person, just a regular guy, just like all you guys. Um, Could I have your address, please? What was that? Could I have your address, please? My address? Yes. Uh, I live in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Okay. Um, I've investigated this tragedy um, for the last year or so plus, and I must say that if any of you people investigate it for yourself, there's Thousands of people on YouTube, there's web pages, there's radio shows that if you look at the, this tragedy, which it was horrible, but there was no life flights out. There was the triage. When you have a mass, when you have a bunch of people that get hurt at anything, there will be people on a triage. There's different tarps on the ground and people will, whether they're deceased or not, they will be put is, you know, injured, first to go out, life flights, ambulances. First of all, the Sandy Hook School was blocked from the, from the firehouse to the school. There, there, there was no way you, people could get in and out. The first helicopter that flies into this area said, I don't know where the children are. They must be so, somewhere safe inside the school. Let me tell you something right now. The first thing police officers do in a tragedy is they get every kid out of that school and they search from crevice to corner in a school. Supposedly there was people in that school till 115, they were hiding. In... No, you evacuate every single person out of this school, every single person, and you check every crevice. And in my uneducated, I don't have the credentials that some of these people have, the education that some of these people have, but I, in my own view, I can see at least a dozen, if not more, inconsistencies with how people conduct how they're supposed to do it. An emergency evacuation, I mean, it's just, it's obvious. It's, you guys can all do it for yourselves, for your families, for your town, your city, your state, everything. I mean, this is not fake. This is, we're here for a reason. And this is not going away. Like Benghazi won't go away for Obama, this is not going to go away until you guys investigate it for yourself, find out the truth, and we all find it out together. 
And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for hearing all of us. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? Will James, Beacon, New York. Uh, just an interested observer. Um, you know, I, I completely understand how you protect the reputations of the children that were involved in this uh, tragedy, but the perpetrator has never been shown at the scene. He is a mass murderer. There's no reason to impeach your own reputations, the reputations of the politicians of Connecticut, the state police, the local police. There's no reason to impeach their reputations. Simply show the, the perpetrator at the scene or the autopsy show any proof that he really existed besides a hat and a shirt or wherever it is. Why, why leave all this question in the air when you have something that's clearly been photographed, clearly available, and should be made available to the public? You clear up a lot of the controversy with that simple thing. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? Good evening. My name is uh, Thomas Lapp. I'm from Sayreville, New Jersey. Um, after the events that happened on December 2012, I have to be honest that I've seen a lot of websites and seen a lot of crazy things. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not the kind of person that just looks at any YouTube video and just makes a determination. I'm the kind of person I look at evidence. Um, I like to consider uh, people who actually have experience in analyzing evidence and what they have to say. Uh, so in doing so, I contacted several people who are in law enforcement who are good friends of mine, uh, some that are in uh, the police departments, uh, some are in the federal level. Of course, I can't share their information with you because if I were to do that, uh, well, they'd most likely lose their jobs. Well, I will tell you that according to what these people have shown me, things do not add up about what happened on, De on December 12th, on December 14th. Uh, there are too many inconsistencies, everything from images that show alteration when they're done through forensics um, to uh, police reports that do not add up. And it's getting to a point where more and more people in this country are realizing that there is something wrong. Now, I understand that there's a lot of people who genuinely believe that more gun control is the answer. And when you genuinely believe in something, you will reach a point where you will do anything to get to that, to, to, to that objective. You know, the ends justify the means. However, um, doing anything dishonest never, ever justifies the means. And I, I would tell you that if you've received orders that were will be considered unlawful, um, you will be held accountable. And this, Mr. Halbig here, this is one of the first of many people who have actually worked in law enforcement, both on a state and federal level, who have come forward, and he's not going to be the last. So that's something to really consider um, if the town of Newtown wants to continue to, um, to, shit, to spread this lie with the rest of the country. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michelle Murphy, and I'm from Houston, Texas. Is that, is that it? Okay. Um, I'm an electrical engineer. I worked for Bechtel for 11 years, worked for the Department of Energy, the Department of Defense. I've been in underground tunnels. I've seen a lot of things. Um, also bipolar, um, involved in mental health. I'm working on my second book, and that was really my interest, Is uh, was Adam Lanza um, initially, um, and some of these other shootings. You know, it's always t linked to someone that's mentally ill. Um, the way Adam Lanz has been portrayed online is someone who was very intelligent and capable. He wasn't someone that was, uh, um, uh, you know, institutionalized full time or required uh, someone to, you know, he was able to go to school and get good grades. So he was a functional person to some degree. And so I, I had some interest in that. Um, from the aspect that as I've gotten involved in mental health over the years and being aware of advanced technologies, um, there's microwave technology that's used um, in PSYOPs that um, can be directed towards people who have this, uh, I consider it to be a gift for some people um, to be schizophrenic or bipolar if it's used intentionally. There's um, plenty of evidence for that that uh, people that are labeled mentally ill are obviously showing bad symptoms, but that 
Um, with proper training um, in Africa, they have shamans that are schizophrenic. Um, in uh, India, they have people that go sleep deprived for weeks or days just to reach an enlightened stage. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very controversial subject that I'm doing a lot of research in. And I um, will leave my business card here. Um, but, you know, I really <clears throat> am quite surprised that all these shootings, um, I'm not surprised that people that are mentally ill are shooting people occasionally. It's not something that happens. There's so many people. I mean, everybody knows somebody that's mentally ill. It's touched every family. And the incidences are very rare. There's no reason to attack everyone that's mentally ill because of one deranged person that does something. Um, everybody suffers from mental illness to some degree. So um, I don't like that terminology. I don't, I don't like to think of it as a disease. Um, I think it's a gift for a lot of people. So that's all I have. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? <clears throat> My name is Jim Fitzpatrick. I am a Newtown resident. Um, I have friends, police friends, who responded on the day of the event, uh, who saw the tragedy in person and who are still suffering the effects of that. Um, I know families who have lost children. so. My level of frustration to see the circus come to town is, is very high, and I'm of offended by the, um, the collection of conspiracy theories that seems to cover, you know, shamanism to Halloween. It's, it's offensive to me, it's offensive to the people of Newtown that we have suddenly become uh, the poster child for consp conspiracy theories. Newtown has conducted itself wonderfully we have, we have pulled together as a town. We have done our best to respect those who came to town. Thank and, you, thank you, please. And to sit and listen to this, you know, I came to the United States, um, and one of the things that I cherish is the right of free speech. But there are times when it, it galls me to have to sit and listen to, um, as I said, the circus coming to town. So thank you. That's all I have to say. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? Okay, sensing no further public participation, we'll close that part of our agenda.